and welcome to Real Economy. The EU has pledged to help its neighbouring partner countries during this pandemic. And it's not just about delivering vaccines. It's also about giving €3 billion Euros in emergency loans, macro financial assistance, to 10 neighbouring countries which have been hard hit by this crisis. Guillaume Desjardins headed to one of them, Moldova, where COVID-19 has disrupted every aspect of life. Moldova, with its picturesque landscape, is one of Europe's poorest countries. It has been also hit hard by the coronavirus. Some of the most impacted are dairy farmers, who have come up against an exceptional drought and the pandemic, compromising their already fragile finances. We couldn't have brought the nutrients from abroad. And because of closing the shops, we couldn't bring to the farm all the materials and the necessary at the farm. In such a situation, we cannot equilibrate and people decide and is necessary so for them, for their rentability to slaughter the cows. Farmers aren't the only ones struggling financially. The whole Moldovan economy is suffering. The pandemic has seen fiscal revenues go down, whilst public health and social expenditures have increased. To make up for some of the state's financial shortcomings, charities are stepping up to help some rural areas. The list of people in absolute poverty got bigger. So as the list became bigger, it is harder for the, uh, also for the state to sustain them all. Before the virus hit, the situation was already precarious. With an average monthly income of 350 euros, 27% of the workforce left the country. Since 2010, the EU has granted Chisinau macrofinancial assistance twice. In 2019, Moldova had a decent growth rate of 3.6% and unemployment was stable at only 5.1%. The government was even contemplating launching a public infrastructure construction program, but the coronavirus crisis has put this on hold. Last April, the European Union granted a 100 million euro loan to this former Soviet Republic. We asked Maya Sandu, the country's new president, how this macro financial assistance could help Moldova. The economy badly needs the assistance. The Moldovan businesses have not been supported at all uh, last year, and there is not money put in the current budget to support the economy, and it means losing jobs, it means losing incomes for many people, it means increasing poverty. However, this loan comes with conditions. The first 50 million was handed over in November 2020. The rest will only be transferred to the Moldovan Central Bank when the country has passed reforms to fight corruption. These include strengthening the rule of law as well as improving economic governance. I do support the conditionality which go along the people's uh, demands uh, for good governance because the EU taxpayers want to know that the money they've been providing to the Moldovans uh, reach the Moldovans and help the Moldovans and do not end up being misused by some of the corrupt people, including in Parliament or in other state institutions. Dimitri Pintia is an economist at Expert Grub, one of the organisations in charge of monitoring these conditions. He says this goal will not be achieved without a political shift in the coming weeks. Moldova does not have a plenipotentiary government at the moment which can implement the reforms. And in the same time, uh, the government does not have uh, support in the parliament. The majority of deputies are against the reforms and against these conditionalities. Like Moldova, the other nine countries receiving EU macro financial assistance also have to sign up to reform conditions. Macro financial assistance is a helping hand from the EU, but as you heard there, it does come with conditions. Here's your crash course on exactly how it works. The European Commission is providing €3 billion Euros in emergency assistance to 10 of its neighbouring countries to help cushion the worst of the economic fallout from the pandemic. They include candidate EU countries, potential candidate EU countries and EU neighbourhood countries. 
Known as macrofinancial assistance, it comes mainly in the form of loans, with highly favourable terms and low interest rates. It is generally paid to the country's central bank and used by the government to stabilise its public finances. To receive the money, countries must have signed up to a financing programme with the International Monetary Fund, meet conditions for respecting human rights, implement democratic, economic and governance reforms and crack down on corruption. Commissioner Varré is in charge of neighbourhood and enlargement of the EU and I've come to meet him to find out more about why this financial assistance is so important right now. Europe will never be a safe and prosperous place until the neighbourhood is also safe and prosperous. Safe meaning recovering from the Covid crisis and prosperous meaning recovering from the economic uh, repercussions the Covid crisis created. For EU viewers watching and wondering why money is being spent outside of Europe, what do you say to them? Because to pursue our interests we have to be there. Being there also means contributing to the needs, the most important priorities these countries have. Also creating a world that is more like Europe, outside Europe. Meaning that we have a foreseeable business climate, investment possibilities for our companies, meaning more exchanges with these countries, be it trade, be it uh, visiting these countries, and meaning, of course, uh, stability, security around us. Now, we heard in Guillaume's report just now that it looks unlikely that Moldova will be able to or willing to even implement the economic reforms needed to have the second instalment of this COVID MFA. How concerned are you about that? I'm not concerned. I have met the president and for me, her commitment has been very solid. I'm very hopeful that in their own interest, they will meet all the conditions. It's not in the interest of the EU uh, to pursue these objectives. These objectives we have set together with Moldova, and it is in the interest of the Moldovan people to achieve all these reforms, because that will make their judicial system, their economic system much more resilient and much more capable of recovering from the COVID crisis. Commissioner, thank you very much for being with us here on Real Economy. Thank you. Well, that's all from the Real Economy team this week. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time.